What is up everybody? It is Wick here and I got some things to show you that sell on eBay for great money. These are things you might not be aware are valuable. They can be very deceiving. I believe this is my fifth or sixth video in this series, if you will. So check out the other videos if you have not. And don't forget to hit that like button for me. Leave me a comment, be subscribed, all that stuff, and I'll keep making these videos. So the first item are going to be these backgammon sets. Now I see these a lot at thrift stores, a lot at garage sales, places like that. A lot of people just have them in their closets at home some of these are actually worth quite a bit of money you can see here's a couple that have best offer accepted and a lot of these ebay prices i mentioned in every video can be a little inflated can be incorrect but the general idea is just to see what's actually selling for good amounts of profit uh, good amounts of money not just necessarily you know thousands of dollars. Since this was best offer, I don't know exactly what these sold for, but if you're looking for the Bakelite stuff and this brand right here, Chrysloid, I believe is how you pronounce that, you can find some good profits in this stuff. Even the pieces uh, we have here, some different boards. I remember my dad was always bringing in Bakelite stuff and it, it holds more value, it seems like, than a lot of things. And here's some of these just the chips here sold for over a thousand dollars with nine bids. I don't even know how to play this game. I've always been curious about it. Maybe one day I'll look up a YouTube video on how to play this. But you can see most of the high-end ones are going to be these Chrysloid ones with the Bakelite stuff. But there's still some good sets that you could find that's worth fifty to a hundred dollars even. If you're not finding, you know, the highest end ones and you can see thousand, here's some more of the chips for 871. And this is things that people have in their basement that they come from different family members, maybe, and they don't really realize it's worth a whole lot. So they'll put it out in a garage sale for like a dollar. They just figure it's a backgammon set. So they just put it out, right? Nothing too special. So I've been keeping an eye out for these better sets for a while. And I've sold a few of the, the vintage ones that are just like made by Milton Bradley. You know, they can still sell for like 20 bucks, maybe if you're getting them for 50 cents. It just depends on, you know, if you want to take, take the time to sell them, count the pieces and all that. But for a really good set, I've been keeping an eye out for these. And you can see, again, we're still in the 600. We've been scrolling for a while. And they're 1930s here, different sets. And I can almost guarantee you probably, you know, 10, 12 years ago when I was going to garage sales, I did not know about these. I probably passed up some, right? They're easy to pass up because I feel like you see like a chess set or well, a lot of chess sets are worth picking up too, obviously, but like checkers and chess sets that are just cheaper ones. And backgammon, you know, it, again, it's just not as popular as chess or checkers seems like to me. So I think just a lot of hidden value here. And I just scrolled a bunch and we're still in, you know, 200 plus dollars for some of these boards and you keep seeing that that Chris Lloyd name I haven't even seen any other brands really uh, except for Franklin Mint which I'll be talking about some Franklin Mint stuff here soon very sought after brand for sure so keep an eye out for it I think you can find it make some money let's talk about water guns it's summer right and there's some very valuable toy water guns out there specifically these Larmy super soaker guns vintage now, this was my childhood I had a super soaker myself I remember always looking at the the ones the bigger they got the more crazy they got the more you just wanted them as a kid right that's kind of what the 90s was there's always trying to make everything so ext extreme so here you have this 96 cps 2000 mk1 you see 53 bids 410 dollars you got one new up here sold for about 500 uh you got looks like super soaker 300 i kind of remember that one uh, this one's used, complete in box. Best offer was 350. Here's another CPS 2000. Here's another Super Soaker 300. And you can find these all the time at garage sales. Um, people just don't think an old water gun is going to be valuable. Now here's Super Soaker 50. This is the one that I had, at least one of the ones, the first one I got anyway. This one's new in box for 275. So obviously any of these you find new is just gonna increase the value. But still, I think you can sell a Super Soaker 50 uh, somewhere for around $40, $50 used. I've actually found them at thrift stores before and sold them, so pretty good profits there. There's the uh, Super Soaker 100, a brand new 228 now. I think I had this one too. I remember at least really wanting that one, even if I didn't have it. Here's some more, uh, these CPS 4100 Mo Monster XL. There's some sort of King Kong squirt gun. It looks, looks like it's pretty valuable. I guess there's some unique stuff like that, of course, can have value. But if you're noticing, most of these are Super Soakers that are holding the most valuable as used sales on eBay. Gun with backpack, water tank, 200 bucks. Monster XL again, 
Got a couple of these. Now, obviously, if you're trying to sell these in the winter, you might not get as high of a price, but with summer hitting, people are looking to take their cool vintage water guns to the, the cookouts, I guess. The pool, I don't know. What do people do nowadays? Is do kids even want to use water guns? I don't know. I would assume. I see some water gun commercials every now and then. I'm pretty sure they don't make any super soakers anymore, do they? I don't know. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on that. Of course, not every one of these super soakers are going to be worth money. I found a few in the past that are only worth like $20, some smaller ones or some models that just aren't sought after. I mean, here's like a hand machine gun, water gun, <laughs> $140. Now, man, I wouldn't want to use that, right, at a cookout. That's that's how people get shot because people think they're real guns. Like, that looks just like a real, like, Uzi or something, right? Speaking of, here is a Larmy uh, Uzi machine gun, new in box. Like, that thing just looks very realistic. I think now, like, all guns like that that are sold have to have the orange tip or a colored tip on them by law. Um, not 100% sure, but I was always under that assumption or heard it somewhere. Actually, I remember finding a, a new Super Soaker and selling it for like 30 or $40. It's just a small gun like this one. You can see this one sold for $104.99. And these things, the prices go in waves. If something like a TikTok video or something triggers the excitement for old water guns, people will just start buying them and paying a lot for them. Of course, finding these things, there was a lot of them made and there's still a lot of them being desired as as used and new. Of course, finding them new is more rare, but I found at least one new, um, a couple used. So certainly profit in these old water guns. Always look them up. Let's talk about some Easton Press books. These books generally have a high value, but there's always exceptions. You can see here, you got some like a hundred plus books, like maybe you find that many in an estate sale or something like that. But some of these, like this whole James Bond 007, 14 volume set sealed, um, you know, selling for a few thousand, it looks like. And I have sold some of these. I believe I sold a set of three. I can't even remember what book series it was. And I got a couple hundred bucks for them. Like here's people just obviously selling, as, like, it looks like estate stuff or something, right? Somebody just has a whole collection. You know, when you go into a, a Goodwill or a garage sale, estate sale, somewhere like that, and you just see a bunch of books like this, like encyclopedias or something, they never really have much value. It's worth making sure they're not some sort of Easton press collection. They do look very similar. And of course you just look and see if it's, you know, made by Easton press, then do your research looking up comps and stuff like that. Right. But I need to get to some of these more single books. I think here's the novels and short stories of John Steinbeck in eight volumes. Looks like it sold for about $1,750 hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy. Oh, this one's signed. That's why it's so much, but still even not signed. I guarantee you there's a probably worth at least a few hundred bucks. William Shakespeare set looks like, you know, $1,500. George Washington, I don't even know what that is. Absolute mint. Best offer was accepted. And there's a lot of them, like even single books that are going to sell for 20 to 50, maybe even $100 by themselves. So it's just not these collections you got, you got to keep an eye out for. Of course, it's the dream scenario, right? To go to a garage sale and just see like 100 Easton Press books that are going to be worth a lot of money like the Wizard of Oz collection here for $1,400. Here's a King James Bible one. It looks like it best offer. Again, you can't really tell, but it was priced $1,500. Like even if it sells for like 500, right? That's some good profit if you're getting it at a good price, of course. And if you know the value of these, and even if you find them priced high, like someone kind of knows what they got, you can still make money on them. Uh, buy a set for 200, sell it for 500, something like that. Lots of options out there. I don't know why people are so into Easton Press. Like, I don't know the history behind it or anything like that. Would be nice to do the research. Uh, maybe I will sometime. Because when you're reselling, you're always finding new things. And actually, you learn a lot about many, many different things. Like the histories behind companies and all that kind of stuff. Baseball Hall of Fame, $645. I would take it all day. But yeah, Easton Press. Keep an eye out for them. So if you're outsourcing a lot, going to garage sales, thrift stores, all that jazz, you see so much Marvel stuff, all kinds of comic book stuff. It's everywhere. It's in the toys, games, puzzles, even a lot of home decor. You'll find posters and paintings, all that kind of stuff. Very big. 99% of it is junk and has no resale value, but it's good to know about some of the things that do hold value. 
like these legendary Marvel deck game cards. If you happen to see these, make sure to pay attention to them. Might just look like a simple, you know, Marvel game, comic book game slash toy, but there's definitely going to be some profit in these things. You see a lot of these sets are getting close to around a thousand dollars. And this is a game where it's kind of like a deck building game. If you're familiar with that, just a bunch of cards and kind of build your deck as you're playing. This was made by Upper Deck. I don't think a lot was made, but um, it had a pretty good fan base, which is why the price is up. Everybody's, you know, trying to find these in the, the board gaming, card gaming, collectible card gaming company or community, uh, not company, but I have found a, I think it was some sort of starter box. I didn't sell it. I don't think I, I, I have it in my board game collection, maybe play it sometime, but I noticed the price of these are just shooting up. That's usually what happens with these board game stuff, especially like I've talked about the hero scape stuff. Once it goes out of print, there's enough fans and enough new people still coming into it. And you know, their friends or a comic book store, gaming store introduces them to it. It's not being made anymore and, and people pay up for this stuff. I've sold a lot of game stuff like this and it, it's kind of hit and miss for me because I, I also like this kind of stuff. So a lot of the stuff I find, I'm very tempted to keep. And that can cost a lot of money, even though, you know, I'm not paying much <laughs> for this stuff. But a lot of the same sets here, condition's gonna matter. Uh, if all the cards are there, it's gonna matter. But even if it's not, I mean, you can sell a lot of the single cards. So in the sea of Marvel and comic book stuff, keep an eye out for the card game. And there's also multiple card games. That makes it more complicated. They're not worth as much. Got some more games here. I might have talked about this on the channel at some point. I know I've mentioned it. Uh, this is on my bucket list to find. Vintage 1986 Fireball Island. And I remember playing this as a kid. It's kind of crazy since I was probably like set, well, I was seven years old when this came out. I must've been playing it between like the ages of seven to 10, something like that, because I doubt it was in stores for years. I just remember this game like really messing with my imagination, expanding it. I would look at this board. I'd, I remember there's a little skeleton on the beach and I would just, you know, fill in the backstory for everything that was happening on this board. So I would love to actually find this game. Now, this box is, it's a huge box. It's a very big game. If I do find it, unfortunately, I'll have to store it. I probably won't sell it. Maybe if I find it and it's incomplete, I'll part it out or something like that. But it's going to be hard to find. You can see one here, $600 brand new. It says brand new, but it's, it's out of the box. And, you know, maybe the pieces haven't been punched or whatever. But you got some that are complete around 400 200 300 conditions going to matter 365 so pretty good money in this stuff and if you keep scrolling here a little bit there's a newer version that was released because people had so much nostalgia for this i think a kickstarter happened you can see this one here with a bunch of expansions which i didn't even know they really had now here the fireball island the, the remake wasn't as good as the original i never bought it i think it was even maybe sold in target or something like that Kind of surprised at the price, honestly. Maybe it was just like a Kickstarter thing. You know, if you find this set with all the expansions, there's some money there as well. Let me know in the comments if anyone had this game and, and played it. Um, I, if I remember right, it wasn't like a super in-depth game. You just roll the dice and move your character around. You can randomly fall into traps and stuff. But that box art though, just so cool. I feel like box art now is just not as good as it used to be for games and toys. So let's talk about some Franklin Mint stuff. They make some board games as well. And if you can find the Scrabble set or the Monopoly set, uh, you can make some pretty good profit on these. And actually a couple weeks ago, uh, I saw the Monopoly game, Franklin Mint, at a garage sale. Unfortunately, you know, the guy knew what he had. He told me he paid over $600 for it. So I knew that I wasn't you know, gonna get that as at a great price. Uh, the pieces I believe are gold gold and silver pieces, all that kind of stuff. This is something you're probably gonna find more or less at an estate. Maybe the family just you know, doesn't know the value, they just consider it a, a nicer Monopoly game. I do know, I don't remember who it was back when I was still watching, you know, reseller content on YouTube. I hardly ever watch reseller content that much anymore on YouTube, but I remember somebody I was watching found one of these at a garage sale. I feel like this is something that, that comes to Goodwill. They would probably look it up, probably do some research. It'd be hard to get it at a good price. Uh, they make other games, like I mentioned the, the Backgammon, uh, but mostly the Scrabble Monopoly. Seems like, I know they make some chess sets as well. They're made out of wood. They're just very nice and can be worth a lot of money. Even the pieces will sell great, especially the ones that are gold. <laughs> 
people are looking i'm sure they're gold plated right like 24 karat gold plated but still very cool if you can actually pick up one of these and they do camouflage fairly well with um, the games let's talk about some more board games this is one of the ones i think a lot of people could easily walk past because you see stratego everywhere and people's minds are kind of trained just to walk past it now i buy the vintage ones i sell on amazon i get about 45 dollars for them i think they sell for like 15 20 on ebay so if you're picking them up for 50 cents or a dollar Sure, you can make some money, but I know a lot of people don't you know, really buy lower dollar items like that to flip. So if you see the electronic Stratego, you might in your mind, you might just be like, hey, that's just Stratego, I'm not interested. I've done that with a lot of board games that have electronic versions, which they released a lot of those in the 80s and 90s. And most of the electronic games they released in those time periods do hold decent value, like Battleship and, oh, I can't even think of any. There's a lot of them though but yeah complete 150 bucks um 120 even um well this one's 65 they have 37 dollars shipping though which is too much probably why i thought i noticed one that was selling for like 60 some dollars that did not work but yeah this video is all about just finding valuable things that you might not know is valuable i think electronic stratego is one of those so how about cribbage boards now i found a vintage one at goodwill I think I paid a dollar or two for it. Ended up selling it for about over a hundred dollars. But these things are everywhere. <laughs> I see them at rummage sales. And since I sold that one, I always pick them up. And I think, could this be one of the more valuable ones? Because a lot of them that look old are just not worth anything. But some of the ones that look like the ones that aren't worth anything are worth hundreds of dollars. Here's one that has an ivory inlay. So yeah, stuff like that, a bit more elaborate is going to be valuable. Uh, the vintage noble games, the, the the three track again this is a game i don't know anything about i've never played this game mine didn't even have like all the pegs it was supposed to have uh, i still was able to sell it for a good profit it did have the box though here's a carved chinese one 152 dollars so if i see these cheap enough at a rummage sale and i don't know for sure that they're the, the cheaper ones like the mass produced ones i will just throw them in my bag usually you're getting these for nothing if i see them at thrift stores i'm always looking them up now here's even a, a bowling pin shaped one and if you're finding these for 30 bucks, even 20 bucks, you're paying a dollar. I think they're worth picking up. So the last video I did like this, I was talking about the, the vintage CRT computer monitors, how some of those are worth hundreds or even going into the thousands now because people are buying old computer parts. They're trying to rebuild these old systems. You know, 15 years ago, people were just trying to get rid of all this stuff. Couldn't give it away. Places like Goodwill won't even accept this kind of stuff. You, gotta, you had to take it to an electronic cycling center or something like that. So I wanted to mention these vintage hard drives because yes, even vintage hard drives, like 20 megabyte hard drives even can be valuable because people are looking for, again, the authentic experience, I guess. There are people who buy a lot of this stuff new and they have YouTube channels where they unbox it and build very successful YouTube channels. So they're always looking to buy this kind of stuff new or just find hard to find parts so they can talk about it on their channel. There's all kinds of reasons people buy this stuff. Here's an Atari Mega File 40 for a hard drive uh, this thing almost a thousand dollars you got some more here extremely rare the tandy disk system three hundred dollars of course that some of the apple hard drives are going to be up there here's just an hp mechanical hard drive plus these things go bad they don't really last that long because they have mechanical parts so to find them working again is more rare and the fact that they're just not made anymore more atari mega file stuff um apple macintosh here's an old segate vintage 20 megabyte internal hard drive 139 dollars um wow 20 megabytes it's hard to imagine you know much being able to run on that still i find it fascinating here is a western digital 30 gigabyte hard drive, $150 sealed. Now, I remember finding a Western Digital, I'm pretty sure it was Western Digital, 20, 30, maybe it was 40 gigabyte hard drive mechanical like this. I ended up selling it for like 40 or $50. That was like seven, eight years ago. So the price of this stuff, again, it just keeps going up especially as more people are demanding it. And if you do find a hard drive at a garage sale, you don't know much about it, there should always be a model number that you can just look up. One of the problems with finding these like loose parts though is you can't really test them unless you have the setup to do that. So you do have to sell them as untested, which means either you're gonna have to take returns or you're just gonna have to sell them at a much lower price for parts 
repair or whatever. However, if you do find them new, that's a different story. So I've talked about a lot of plush and how they can be valuable. And I don't think I've talked about Sonic plush. I have mentioned, you know, the vintage t-shirts, some of the hats and stuff that can be worth money. But what I'm noticing again are the, the trends of some of these plush that keep going up in price. You know, now that I think about it, it seems like these were in a video of mine. <laughs> Um, if so, I apologize. I think they were just mentioned in, in passing though, because I was looking up a Sonic plush and I started seeing some of these. I'm like, are they really starting to get that valuable? Some of them. Now you can see this one is over 9,082 bids, 2,510. I don't know, you know, if these are actual comps that you can rely on or not. As you see some of these, uh, they look a little fishy. You got the, like on the same blanket, kind of the same picture, multiple listings, usually a red flag, but still, um, if you keep doing your research, Research, you see a lot of these things still selling in the hundreds. The brand, the, the tag matters. If you're not familiar with Sonic the Hedgehog, I am, so they're pretty easy to spot. It's good to just go on eBay and kind of look at the characters because so, a lot of the toys actually do hold value. Um, like there's Tails, Sonic, uh, Dr. Robotnik, Plush here, or Eggman, I think they changed the name too. But I wanted to kind of mention them uh, again, if I didn't already mention them, and I guess this San San E or San A company is, you know, some of the ones that where they come from Japan that hold value. So keep an eye out for them, make some money. And I think it's always been a debate on what type of shoes Sonic the Hedgehog wears. And I've I've heard people claim that they are soap shoes. I don't know if there's ever a developer that created the character that was basing it on there. It was kind of in the same time period. And that made me think of soap shoes. These are vintage skater type shoes and they hold some decent value. If you happen to find these, you can probably make some good money if they're in a decent enough condition condition anyway and they don't look like anything special so I think a lot of people would walk past these I know I look through probably at least a thousand pairs of shoes a week it feels like um probably accurate though probably about a thousand pairs if I'm going to multiple goodwills um every day uh, garage sales rummage sales but you see a lot of just generic shoes kind of weird off brands that maybe walmart sells or even now you see a lot of the amazon brands you might think this is one but it's not uh, they're worth money and that also made me think about airwalk shoes and since i recently bought and sold a pair of these i, I figured i'd show them here airwalk also vintage skater shoes you can see some of them 400 here 217 149 150 130 and these are pretty rare now these say 80s um i was thinking most of them were early 90s like maybe they're also i would yeah probably 80s too i guess a lot of these airwalk prototype 600 skateboard shoes can land you over 100 bucks and the pair i found was really awesome let me see if i can find them here real quick uh should be around here because uh mine had a little bit of cracking happening oh they gotta be here right gotta be coming up it's been about a month here they are i ended up selling mine for 80 dollars plus shipping very unique pair unfortunately like the the leather or pleather i guess on these was starting to just crack a little bit around the toes so i had to mention that which is why i have reed in there otherwise i i'm i probably would have tried 120. they didn't take long to sell though so Paid five dollars for them. I sell them for eighty dollars. That's that's great for me. I've been keeping an eye out for soap shoes and Airwalk shoes for a long time, uh, and finally found a pair. So very happy to uh, finally cash in on that knowledge. There it is, everybody. That's my items for today. I hope you learned something. I hope maybe you have some of these things in your closet. Maybe you'll go to a garage sale tomorrow and you'll find them. I know I get comments all the time, messages from people who watch these videos, and then the next day they actually find what I'm talking about. Uh, they sit me pictures messages very cool but before you go don't forget to hit that like button for me make sure you're subscribed you can find me on tiktok twitter and instagram flipping underscore junk and this has been wick till next time